You will need three different shades of yarn. This is for the center, the petals, and the background color. You will also need a 3.75 millimeter hook. To begin round one, make a magic ring. Work 12 single crochets in the magic ring. Once you've worked 12 single crochets in the magic ring, pull the initial yarn tail tight to close up the magic ring. Next, slip stitch to the first single crochet to close up round one. To begin round two, chain one and work a single crochet in the same stitch. Continue working one single crochet in each stitch all around. You should have 12 single crochets by the end of the round. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 single crochets. Slip stitch to the first single crochet to close up round 2. Now you can cut the yarn and fasten off. I like to tie knots in the initial yarn end and the final yarn end. Choose any stitch farther away from the yarn tail and insert your crochet hook. Now it is time to add the new yarn color. You can make a slip knot and add the yarn, or you can simply add the new yarn like this. Hold the initial yarn tail behind your work and crochet around it. To begin round three, work the beginning cluster. Chain two, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, pull through, Yarn over, pull through two loops. Continue repeating these two steps until you have four loops on your hook. There are now four loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all the loops. Now that the beginning cluster has been worked, chain three. Work a regular cluster in the next stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook in the stitch, and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Repeat these two steps until you have five loops on your hook. There are now five loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all the loops. Chain three. Continue working clusters all around with chain threes in between. Here you can see the initial yarn tail that I've been crocheting around. I will drop it here. Now I am crocheting around the final yarn tail from round two. I try not to crochet around multiple yarn tails at the same time as sometimes it can get bulky. That is why I space the yarn tails farther apart. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 clusters and my chain 3. Slip stitch to the top of the beginning cluster to close up round 3. Now you can cut the yarn and fasten off. Tie a knot. At this point, I like to weave in all the yarn tails except the last one. Notice how I crocheted over the yarn tail in this direction. I want to weave it in the opposite direction. I like to use my small 2mm hook to weave in the yarn ends. You can go through as many stitches as you want for extra security. Cut the yarn and continue weaving in all the other ends. Note that I'm always weaving in the yarn tails on the wrong side of the crochet project so that it is less visible. Join the new yarn color in any chain 3 space. To begin round 4, chain 3. This counts as one double crochet. Work two double crochets in the same chain space. Chain 3.
Then work three more double crochets in the same chain space. These are the corner stitches. Work three half double crochets in the next chain space. In the next chain space, work another three half double crochets. In the next chain space, we will once again work the corner stitches, which are three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. You will continue this pattern all the way around. Here you can see we have corner, half double, half double, corner, half double, half double, corner, half double, half double, corner, half double, half double. To close up round four, we will work a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. To begin round five, chain three. This counts as one double crochet. Work one double crochet in the next stitch. We're going to skip the next stitch and work the corner stitches in the chain space. The corner stitches are three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. These are the corner stitches. We're going to skip the next stitch and work a double crochet in the subsequent stitch. Continue working double crochets across. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten double crochets. You're going to skip the next stitch and work the corner stitches once again in the chain space. Repeat this pattern around, working four corners with double crochet stitches in between. You will always skip the stitches right before and after the chain spaces. Here we are in the last double crochet section. We will work double crochets across. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double crochets. To close up round five, you will work a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. To begin round six, chain four. This counts as one double crochet and a chain one. Skip the next stitch and work one double crochet in the subsequent stitch. Next, chain one, skip one, and work one double crochet in the following stitch. Note that this stitch is the last stitch before the chain space. It is now time to work the corner stitches in the chain space. The corner stitches are two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. Skip 
Skip the next stitch right after the chain space and work one double crochet in the subsequent stitch. Now we will continue with the same pattern where you chain one, skip one, and work one double crochet in the following stitch. Continue repeating this across. Notice how you should have double crochet stitches with chain ones in between. Note that your last double crochet should always be worked in the stitch right before the chain space. After working the corner stitches, note that the stitch right after the chain space is always skipped in this round. After repeating the pattern and working all four corners, here we are in the last part of round six. To close up round six, chain one and slip stitch to the third chain of the beginning chain four. Your granny square is done after six rounds. Cut the yarn and pull through. You will need to crochet 13 squares for this bag. Arrange all 13 granny squares as instructed in the pattern and whip stitch them together using a yarn needle. When whip stitching, go through both the front and back loops of both granny squares. Ensure that the wrong sides of the granny squares are facing you when whip stitching for a cleaner seam on the right side. After folding and seaming all the granny squares together, it is now time to crochet the top edging and strap. We will begin in the right corner of the top edge and work single crochets all the way around. We will be working in joined rounds. Switch to a 2.75 millimeter hook to get tighter stitches and make a slip knot. Find the stitch in the right corner, insert your crochet hook, Add your slip knot and pull through. Chain one and work one single crochet in the same stitch. Continue working single crochets in each stitch around. This includes working single crochets in the chain stitches. Continue repeating until you reach the beginning of the round. Here you can see all the single crochet stitches I have worked and I have also placed a stitch marker in the first single crochet of the round. To close round one, you will slip stitch to the first single crochet where the stitch marker is located. To begin round two, chain one and work one single crochet in the same stitch. You can place a stitch marker in that first single crochet of the round. Now we will work the waistcoat stitch or the center single crochet. Locate the V from the previous round and insert your hook in the middle of the V. On the other side, you can see how the hook is in between the V. To complete the stitch, you will yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Notice that we are not inserting our hook in the front and back loops like this. Rather, we are inserting our hook in the middle of the V, which results in very dense stitches. Continue working waistcoat stitches in this manner along the edge of the first granny square until you reach the top tip. Now, we will crochet the strap and join it to the other side. Chain 85. You can adjust this number as necessary if you would like your strap to be longer or shorter. Being careful not to twist the chain, insert your hook into the top tip of the second granny square. Work one single crochet. The strap has now been joined to the other side. Continue working the waistcoat stitch in each stitch around until you reach the top tip on the other side. Now it is time to crochet the second strap. 
Once again, you will chain 85 and join to the other side. Here are the 85 chains. Insert your hook into the last top tip and work a single crochet. Work the waistcoat stitch until the end. To close round two, slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round where the stitch marker is located. To begin round three, chain one and work one single crochet in the same stitch. Once again, you can use a stitch marker to mark that first single crochet. Work the waistcoat stitch in each stitch up until the chains. Now it is time to crochet in the chain stitches. Carefully insert your hook into the front and back loops of each chain and work a single crochet. I have now worked single crochets in all of the chain stitches. Continue working waistcoat stitches around until the second strap. We will repeat what we did for the first strap by working single crochets in the chain stitches. Then we will work waistcoat stitches until the end of round three. For round four, we will work waistcoat stitches in each stitch around, including the strap stitches. Insert your hook into the middle of the Vs of the strap stitches to work the waistcoat stitch. Now that we have worked waistcoat stitches all around, including the straps, it is time to close up round four. Slip stitch to the first single crochet or the stitch marker to close up round four. You can cut your yarn and fasten off. Now that we have finished crocheting the top edging and strap, it is time to crochet the inner strap and dip of the V. We will begin here in the dip of the V. Make a slip knot. Insert your hook into the dip of the V, add the slip knot, and pull through. Yarn over, chain one, and work one single crochet in the same stitch. Work the waistcoat stitch in each stitch across. As we're approaching the strap, work single crochets along the sides of the top edging. On the underside of the strap, we will insert our hook into the upside down Vs that are found underneath the horizontal bars. These are the horizontal bars and the upside down Vs can be found right underneath. This results in very dense stitches that help increase the strength and durability of the strap. Once we're past the strap, it is once again time to work single crochets along the sides of the top edging. Then continue working the waistcoat stitch until the end of the round. Skip that last stitch of the round to prevent bunching. To close round one, slip stitch to the first single crochet where the stitch marker is. To begin round two, chain one and work one single crochet in the same stitch. For round two, work waistcoat stitches in each stitch around. Continue working the waistcoat stitch all around, including along the strap. At the end of round two, once again skip that last stitch to prevent bunching. To close round two, slip stitch to the first single crochet. You can cut the yarn and fasten off. You can use a yarn needle to do the invisible join for a clean finish as shown here.
Repeat the instructions for the inner strap and dip of the V on the other side of the bag. You can use a steamer to block the final bag and all of the seams to help relax the fibers and smooth out the stitches. You can steam block the straps as well. Enjoy crocheting your own breezy days daisy bags everyone!